So I've been thinking about Lent, and I've been thinking about this idea of being mirrors and glass and all of that, and I've been thinking about this idea that we're made in the image of God and that that tells us some things about ourselves as persons, and in particularly that we're made to be in community, and that the first community that we get to belong to is the community of our homes. And so then as mothers that we have this responsibility and um, gift of being able to order the community of our homes. And you know, Margaret and I watch videos about nuns every night before she goes to bed. And one of the things that I've noticed over the several years that we've been doing this is that there's always something in the order of the day. There's a discipline in just the daily life that constantly is turning the sisters back to the Lord. So they get up and they pray and they go and do their work and they come back and they pray and then they go and do their work and then they come back and they have a meal and they pray and they go and do their work. And how much we need that, those things in our day in our schedule that turn us back to God that remind us of what the center should be because it's so easy to think that the center is homeschooling or the center is projects or the center is sports or the center is whatever it is we get distracted so quickly and then I think one thing we've seen with this pandemic isolation is that when some of those centers are taken away we don't know what to do or that we've kept ourselves so busy in previous years that we haven't noticed that our center was missing or not rightly oriented. And I've been thinking about how Lent is an opportunity to grow in the disciplines of the spiritual life. And how easy it is for us to think, oh, it's Lent. I, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go through those 40 days and then life's going to get back to normal again. I'm going to start putting sugar in my tea. But Lent isn't outside of time and we're not outside of time. And so the things that we do in these 40 days are opportunities for us to grow in the habits of the spiritual life. I was talking to a child here the other day who was having some troubles and making bad choices over and over again. And we've been talking about holiness because two students are doing First Communion preparation. And I said to this child, I said, do you know what holiness is? And the child said, no. He wasn't very interested, really. And I said, well, holiness is just the habit of making, of choosing the good. Over and over again, choosing the good. And every time you choose to treat that sibling nicely, you just increased in holiness. And the kid was like, really? I was like, yeah, it's nothing. It's a habit, it's all it is. Habits are hard to develop, but the more times that we make right choices, the easier it is to make right choices. A little oversimplified for small minds, but not, I think, untrue. And I think that we look at that and we think about the disciplines of Lent and we have this tendency because our culture has such a bad understanding of what discipline is to think that Lent is a kind of opportunity to self-punish because if we punish ourselves then God won't. When it's really an opportunity for growth in that habitually choosing of the good, that attitude of, of looking for what is right in this situation and choosing to do what's right. And I think the biggest place where, as mothers, we can really work on that is in this idea of prayer. You know, the three things of Lent, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Well, as mothers, we give alms all day long. <laughs> and as mothers, we do a lot of fasting and abstaining from things. But as mothers, do we pray? You know, our new bishop has done something which kind of astonished me. He 
has told all of his priests that they must have a daily holy hour. Now, I was astonished because the priests that I know already do that. And so I thought, whoa, whoa, you know, are they not? But what, but why? Because he said, we can't hear from God if we're not making time to be with God. And if we're not making time setting time, putting time in our schedule, making sure that it's important because otherwise, well, oh yeah, it'd be great to have a holy hour, we think on Sunday night and Saturday rolls around and it's never happened because just as in the parable of the sower, the cares of the world grew up and choked it out. Now a whole hour, that might be hard to find for a mom, but 10 minutes, 10 minutes to sit quietly to say, okay, Lord, what do you have for me? Not, what do you have for me this year? What do you have for me this month? But Lord, here's my stuff for today. What do you have for me? Here's what I think I should be doing today. Which of these things do you think are important? And he will answer and he will make it clear because he desires that we be walking in his will. And if we ask him to show us what he wants, he will always, always respond to that. And then I think to take two smaller times, you know, just as the, as the nuns in the, in the monastery return and recollect themselves without, within the day, in the hours, the litur- liturgy of the hours, to take two smaller times and to say, okay, in my schedule, I'm going to put five minutes for me to drink a cup of tea and not to do anything else, not to scroll social media, not to pick up a book, hopefully not to settle a squabble, (laughs) Um, but to just sit and to just be and to say, okay, Lord, we had a conversation this morning about lessons. I think they went pretty smoothly. What do you think? Where could I have improved? Where was my patience then? And the more that we enter into that conversation, the more that we are in communion with God, the more we are able to be in communion with our community. And the gentler we will be, and the calmer we will be, and the more peaceful we will be. And the more able to hear from the Lord we will be. But we have to determine and ask for grace to do that discipline of saying no. At six o'clock in the morning, even if the children are up, I'm not available. For instance, I just get up way early because it works better for me. Um, And to practice those disciplines and those habits. And then when Easter comes, to continue to practice those disciplines and those habits because Lent is intended to help us learn to see the Lord more clearly. Partly by dealing with our own soul stuff that we need to deal with, and partly by those disciplines of fasting and almsgiving and prayer drawing us closer, opening our eyes so that we can see. And I think we we tend to think that, oh, I'm going to get some grace from God and then I'm not going to deal with this anymore. And there is an aspect of that. God is able and does and has historically fixed things for people. But mostly, he gives us grace to do little steps. And even St. Paul, who experienced this marvelous grace of the Lord on the road to Damascus. I mean, here you are, one day, minute, you're fighting against the Lord as hard as you can, and he appears and you're like, oh no, what the? what was I thinking? And you turn around and you end up becoming this wonderful apostle. But even Paul says, I have learned. That experience on the road to Damascus wasn't enough. He had to walk day after day after day through all of those shipwrecks and beatings and persecutions until he could say, I have learned to be content in all things. And that's what we need. We need that daily step, that little habit that becomes holiness. It is holiness, but it's small, it's a kernel, it's a mustard seed. 
that becomes holiness. And that's what Lent is calling us towards. That's what the Christian life is calling us towards. But eventually, we are in communion with the Lord and communion with one another. And then, that's holiness. Pray for me. I'm praying for you.